In this video, I will be showing you how to graph the absolute value of quadratic functions. So when we're asked to graph y is equal to the absolute value of f of x, where f of x is quadratic, we have to follow two steps. And the first of them is to simply draw our graph normally. So we draw it normally. Then we have to account for the absolute value. So the second step is to reflect the negative part of our graph part in the x-axis in the x-axis so this seems simple enough let's give it a try let's say for example that we have an expression y is equal to the absolute value of x squared plus 4x minus 5 and we are asked to graph this so once again as I mentioned earlier what we want to do is what we want to do first is we want to draw our graph normally so how would we do that we ignore the absolute value for now so we write y is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 5 and we want to graph this so you should already know how to graph these graphs or how to graph quadratic equations. First, we'll find the, the points of interception. It crosses the x-intercept when y is equal to 0. So 0 is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5 plus 4x minus 5. We can factorize this. 5 gives us 5 and 1. x squared minus x plus 5x minus 5 we get x times x minus 1 plus 5 times x minus 1 we get x minus 1 times x plus 5 and therefore x is equal to 0 equals 0 equals 0 and therefore x is equal to 1 or x is equal to negative 5 and in both of these cases, y is equal to 0. So we have our initial points of intercept. Let's draw them on a graph. This is our y-axis and our x-axis. Say x is equal to negative 5, 1, 2, 3. Or x is equal to 1. Now we need to solve for either the maximum or minimum point of our curve. So we know that since the coefficient of x squared is positive, we're looking for our minimum point. And I'll be doing this by using the line of symmetry. And this will be at, let's see, these are six points apart and in between is three, so this is minus two, that's right in between them. And our line of symmetry runs directly through this. And this is covered on my video on maximum and minimum points if you don't understand what's happening here. So our line of symmetry is x is equal to negative 2. And this is the point at which our minimum point is. So we plug in minus 2. Minus 2 squared plus 4 times minus 2 minus 5. Plugging this back into our equation. From this we get 4 minus 8 minus 5 which gives us an answer of negative 9. Therefore, the coordinates of our minimum point are x is equal to negative 2 and y is equal to negative 9. So minimum is minus 2, minus 9. Let's draw that on our graph. Minus 9 will be around here. So now what we want to do, as I mentioned earlier, is simply draw the graph normally. So we have our minimum point running through the axis at 1 and negative 5. This is just a rough drawing. When you're actually giving your exam or test, it should be much neater than this. So anyway, now that we have our graph, what else are we supposed to do? Well, we know that in with the absolute value, so we're looking at this is y is equal to f of x and we want to draw the graph of y is equal to the absolute value of f of x. So we know that absolute value means that 
this will always be positive. Therefore, any part of this graph, which is under the axis or which is has a negative value, cannot exist. And the way that we solve this or the way that we reflect this in our graph is that we simply draw the reflection of the part that's under the axis. So in this case, that's this part of our graph in the x-axis. And how do we reflect it? Well, if this point over here is minus 2, minus 9, up here we simply take the point positive 2 or negative 2, positive 9. Negative 2, positive 9. And as such, we reflect the graph in the x-axis. So we can draw this over here. And this is giving us our new graph. Let's and it goes up on either side. I'll erase what we have previously, just for clarity. And this is our final graph, or the graph of y is equal to the absolute value of f of x. And I'll go over that one time in yellow to make it more clear. So just to recap, when you want to solve for the absolute value of f of x, where f of x is a quadratic equation, you first draw it normally, then you reflect the negative part of the graph in the x-axis. Now one thing which is important to note, which you might come across later on, is that you might have a graph or a quadratic equation that looks something like this, where the whole entire thing is negative. So what you do over here is since the whole entire graph is negative, you reflect the whole entire graph in the x-axis. So let's say that if this point is maybe 10, negative 5, then over here you would have the point 10, positive 5, and that would be the minimum point, and this would be the reflected version of the graph. Similarly, you can have an or have an instance where you have your y-axis and your x-axis but your graph is somewhere over here and it never goes underneath the x-axis. So in this case you just draw the graph normally and since it's already positive you don't have to do anything to change it.